Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about how to get more help from your husband. My guest, Kelly, had no help from her husband with her home or their children, no communication, no empathy or appreciation, and worst of all, no connection. She struggled with her own post-traumatic stress disorder, and her husband had a narcissistic parent, so they both had challenges from day one of the relationship. And then Kelly had an insight about how she was contributing to the nightmare she was living, and she changed it up. Today, she says her marriage is a dream, better than it was in the beginning, and she didn't think it was possible. But how did she do it? Well, she's going to describe exactly what she did. So you can do it too. Then I'll be giving out the worst relationship advice of the week award, which is instructions to criticize your spouse and then make them put a quarter in your jar. I'll tell you all about this cockamamie concept and we can make fun of it behind its back together. That'll be fun. All that's coming up. But first, I'm going to share how to get more help from your husband. It's so lonely and exhausting when you feel like the only one being responsible for everything at your house. I remember how stressful it was. I was the only breadwinner at our house, and I felt like I was doing all the housework and paying all the bills too. Talk about overwhelmed and resentful. Not anymore, though. Now, I marvel at how my husband does so much and I do so little. It feels like he does about 90% and I do maybe 10%. And you know what's so strange? We're both happy about it. So much happier than we were in the bad old days. So to say he helps more is quite the understatement. I get way more help and Not because I made a list of chores for him in Excel and put it on the refrigerator either, like I had done unsuccessfully for years. He actually always wanted to contribute. But unbeknownst to me, I was making a lot of mistakes that were preventing him from helping me. And as Catherine Aird said, if you can't be a good example, you'll just have to be a horrible warning. So here are the mistakes I was making. Number one, I was being so helpful with pointing out things he hadn't done while overlooking the things that he had, that my husband, John, felt he couldn't do anything right. As a result, he barely did anything, which made him feel useless and depressed. And it made me crazy because who wants to do everything and also be around a useless, depressed guy? Everybody was miserable, and no wonder. Neither of us was playing to our strengths. Like all husbands, my husband wants to make me happy, but I was so controlling he saw no opportunity to please me or take care of me. I thought I was just being helpful. Now, once I became pleasable by smiling and thanking him when he did help, he seemed so much more inspired to be my hero. Number two, I forgot to say I can't when I was overwhelmed. Instead, I suck up my resentment as long as I could, and then blow my lid in a very undignified way every so often. It was not pretty. And as soon as I started saying, I can't stop at the pharmacy, babysit our niece, or make dinner, my husband started coming up with great solutions like running the errand for me or getting his sister to watch our niece and bringing home takeout. When juggling the bills made me anxious, I said, I can't do this anymore. It's too stressful for me. John has handled that chore ever since, and that's been decades. Having that connection to our money and our household needs when he started managing the bills, combined with his improved self-worth, I'm sure, led him to starting a successful business. I started to think of saying, I can't, as shorthand for I can't do this and still be happy and dignified. Now I use that phrase all the time. Number three, I complained instead of telling him what I desired. 
So he didn't know how to make me happy. And saying things like, I'm so frustrated because I can't find the Tupperware is not the same as saying, I would love a container to put these leftovers in for tomorrow. Even if I think it's obvious that he should help me find the Tupperware, it's not. He needs to know what I want, not what I don't want. The solution was for me to start being clear about what I wanted help with instead of complaining about what I didn't like. As soon as he knew what I wanted, he jumped up to give it to me. The more my husband took on and the more I expressed gratitude and respect, the happier and prouder he seemed and the more relaxed I felt. Number four, I was doing things that nobody ever asked me to do, like making his doctor's appointments, buying his socks. Nobody said that was my job, but I took it on and then I got mad about it. I was a real peach like that. But honestly, I didn't know any better. I was just doing what I saw modeled, which didn't work out well for my parents either. But I I just didn't know any better. I decided to stop doing things he's perfectly capable of doing for himself. And I thought he would be upset, but he wasn't. I think he was actually relieved. Maybe I seemed like his mother, mother, when I was doing that stuff, because that's who used to do those things for him before he became a man who can do that stuff for himself. I still prepare meals for us because I like doing that. And I like deciding what we're going to have and creating the meal and saying, ta-da, dinner. I like grocery shopping. So I do some of that. And instead of the stressed out woman I once was, I'm now a well-taken-care-of one. And it's not hard to respect the successful, hardworking man I married who seems so tireless and generous to me now. And it's the same guy. Same guy. So if you're wanting more help from your husband, how would it be to become pleasable when he does help? Or say, I can't instead of overdrawing your energy account and express your desires instead of complaining and not volunteering to do things he can do for himself. If your husband is anything like mine or the thousands of students on our campus, he is already looking for a way to be your hero. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. My guest Kelly had no help from her husband with their home, their children. There was no communication, no empathy or appreciation, and worst of all, no connection. She struggled with her own post-traumatic stress disorder, and her husband had a narcissistic parent, so they both had challenges really from day one of the relationship. Then Kelly had an insight about how she was contributing to the nightmare she was living, and she changed it up. Today, she says her marriage is a dream, better than it was in the beginning, and she didn't think that was possible. But how did she do it? Well, she's going to describe exactly what she did so that you can do it too. Kelly, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Laura, for having me. Absolutely. So yes. Let's hear about the bad old days. What was going wrong? Well, it definitely was a nightmare and just felt like a never ending cycle of like unfortunate events over and over. And in those days, I had told myself I was a single married mom. Like, I, when we got married, it was like, even though we had those challenges, we're so opposite that we just fit. And then it was like, woke up one day and it's like, who are you? You know, of course me pointing the finger, you know, who are you? You know, you're not who I married. 
Um, but I, at that time, of course, without your skills and self-awareness, I also was not the person who married. It was just really rough. But then in about 2019, I believe it was, we had had the biggest spot that we had ever had in our entire relationship. It was just neither of us when I was writing this and, um, you know, writing into your show. I had asked him, I said, um, I hate to bring this up, but do you remember what sparked that last huge argument? And he said, you mean the only knockdown drug, which we weren't throwing fists, but that's what it felt like. And he was like, no, I have no idea what started it. And so I don't know what started it, but we were going at it. I was just unleashing onto him, just unloading all the years of my pain. You know, just everything I was feeling in the marriage. Um, and honestly, like if he would go to say something, I would have something to prove him wrong. Like, oh, you know, invalidate him. Because my experience at that time, I felt obviously more deeply than I did his. It, it went on for a while. I mean, it felt like we were outside for hours. Um, and then in the middle of it, of me going off on him, he cut me off. And he told me, he said, you're going to let me speak for the last time. And he said, we just both have to face that you're not going to be uh, the woman I fell in love with and have ever loved. You're never going to be her again. And as your best efforts of trying to change me into this good and better man, obviously, I'm not capable of doing whatever or being whoever you want me to be. And he said, so let's just figure out how to live together and just some way, at least till the kids are grown, just till the kids are grown and you can go on your happy way and I'll go on my happy way. Hopefully, hopefully. And he went inside. Like, um, we had walked away from one another before and like little tits for tats, but when he went inside, it was just his demeanor. Like there was not going to be another conversation or an open conversation. And I went inside, of course, after him. And I was like, I told him, I was like, you're not even going to let me then say what I finally have to say. Like, you know, trying to still plead my point or, you know, and telling him, this is what I'm talking about. We don't really talk, you know, all this. And he's like, okay, you can say it. But what I said is what I said. And it was like the door was shut at that moment. That's exactly how I felt. And earlier in 2019, that January, I had found out that, you know, he had had an affair. Um, and so I tried remembering that that's what sparked the argument was just, you know, five months later, those feelings coming up. But thank goodness, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> And um, really don't want to. <laughs> and so I, we had been sleeping in separate rooms. And I went to my room and I just laid there like, what has happened? Like that thought. It wasn't just a thought, but it was a question I kept asking myself. What has happened? What has happened? And I had no answers. Like before, you know, like women do, we've Googled our marriage before. And I thought, well, let's go to Google. And uh, I didn't want to go to Google again. Nothing had came up. Nothing had worked for me. And so I looked at the clock and um, it was a little after one. And I was like, forget it. I'm just going to do it. So maybe I'll go to sleep reading. And I Googled how to fix your marriage when your husband doesn't want to. And you came up. <laughs> just, I mean, it was like, a couple of your interviews, your, your website. And I was like, okay, I have this thing growing up in the South, you know, very superstitious. And there was, you, you were posted on there three times. And I said, okay, three times, got to click it. So I did. And you had a link for your podcast and I'm huge on podcasts. So I clicked your podcast and I actually fell asleep with your podcast open, um, hadn't clicked on one yet, but just reading through the titles. The next morning I got up and him and the kids had went 
on their usual Saturday extravaganza, which at that time I took for granted. I thought that was something that he should do. You know, I'm not going to give you a cookie for you being a parent. Um, And then when I didn't have him as a parent anymore, and then going through this journey, I was like, okay, that is much appreciated. (laughs) Um, So they were gone and I was left at the house. I, that night was the, I had been feeling very, very low, um, scary low, just everything building up and then feeling like the, another door shut on my life. I was sadly trigger warning, having suicidal thoughts. I had even texted my mom and was like, Hey, I'm just not having a good night. Um, these thoughts won't quit. And so my mom periodically throughout the night kept sending in check-ins and um, just little texts. And thank goodness she did because that's, I've never felt that scared of myself ever. And I wouldn't wish that on any woman or man ever. And so as I'm at the house, I click, I scroll all the way down through all your podcasts <laughs> and I click on the first one. And then goes the second one and just kept going and going and going. And Laura, every woman's testimony was like an insight to my life at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, or they were ha- they it might not have been the same experience, but the way they were describing their feelings and thoughts, I was like, yeah, you're preaching to the choir. Um, I think Laura, and then, you know, your messages at the beginning, at the end, I'm like, um, she's got my house knocked up. There's no way she's just de- she's just detailed and she's you know not spying on me. Um, I was so shook that day. Um, the next day I I ordered all your books. Um, I even actually ordered your single one. <laughs> and, um, Why not? Yeah, yeah. And funny thing is, last summer we were cleaning out our home, our guest room, our home library, and my husband was like, and that was on our shelf. Now your other books I keep by my bed because I still I keep reading them. And he seen that book and he was like, "Were you planning on something?" And I was like, "You're not gonna believe this, but it was an accident. I just <laughs> went through those those books on audio and I bought all of them." <laughs> and so. Then I joined the Facebook group and that between your podcast and that with not financially being able to join the full program yet, which is still my number one goal. We almost have a couple of debt paid off. And that's the first thing my husband and I are purchasing is still for me to be in the program Um, and the coaching because to just to have that coach, you know, on that level, um, the fulfillment and the growth that the Facebook group and your podcast has brought me, I can only imagine what the coaching is going to be like for me. And so anyway, then every single day for months, I went through your podcast. I started, I'm a logical thinker. (laughs) And so I started breaking down your seal and I slowly started implementing all of them, but the biggest one that changed my life and my marriage, when I mean my life, Laura, I mean my life and all my relationships. Side funny note, I even tried using them to see if I could build a better situation between us and the certain in-law that my that I have and but they had a they have a life coach as well that was given to them to supposed to help and um she called my husband and said hey I'm proud of what y'all are doing um but back off a little bit (laughs) um because you know it's these skills help you when dealing with a situation Um, with a narcissist, but when you're dealing with a, um, sadly, a a diagnosed, you know, truth or core narcissist, you do have to remember that this is for you and not for them. Mm -hmm. And you can create a dangerous situation. Um, Luckily, I didn't, but it was creating 
a lot of animal anger headed our way. So mm. anyway, so then, but the biggest one that helped was the self care. Mm. Um, I mainly because I skipped self care on your skills at first because I didn't know what that meant. I went through and listened to your podcast and heard the other women, and I was like, oh, okay, okay. So I, I noticed, you know, oh, I don't do this. You know, being a mother and I'm also a mother of a special needs child, I some days would, it would be 10 o'clock. I'm like, oh, I need a shower. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wasn't, I had neglected myself. I mean, I did realize that just personal self care. Um, physical self-care I had neglected but I had not realized I did not know what actual self-care meant the what real self-care was about and so that kind of scared me that I didn't I couldn't understand or get a hold of that skill Mm. but I made myself dive into it so my logical brain went to studying (laughs) and Diving into self care, the word, and um, wherever I could find any kind of material about it. And as I started doing that, um, that was the moment that that was the period where our lives change in mine. Mm. Self care, you know, and even still at the moment, if you were to ask me, what's your self care? It's going to be a list. Oh, I love (laughs) it. Because, you know, I have my mental self-care. I have my physical self-care. You know, I have my emotional self-care. And that's how I have to break it down to feel like I have chosen to take care of myself. Um, So what are some examples of things that you do for self-care now? Well, you know, Laura, um, one part is this right here, the, the skills studying the skills, never giving up on them. Um, constantly relearning myself, constantly diving into how I can be better. Diving into self-accountability, that changed my marriage, changed it. To be honest, Laura, when I started diving into it, that's when I realized that I built the stage for our crop show, you know, in the nicest word I can use, <laughs> um, I, I had ignored and tried to run from the reality that I had PTSD. Um, I tried to run and ignore why I had, what caused the PTSD. Mm-hmm. And um, then tried ignoring that I had postpartum depression. Like hmm. every, it, it, I was just a quick baby blues. You know, I thought, well, just get over it. Constantly acknowledging it isn't changing it. And the reason why acknowledging it didn't alone change my life or my circumstances was because that's all I was doing was acknowledging it. I wasn't trying to process and learn who I was with that as just a little piece of me. It's not a whole me. It's just a piece mm. and not looking at it as something that, Oh, I have to deal with. Oh, it's a struggle for me. It's just a piece. Um, that's it. But so it sounds like you've kind of come into some self-acceptance about. Yes. This. So yes, it was like, this is all. Uh, or like this is going to be forever, or this is going to swallow me whole, which is I think it kind of felt weird. like that before. Yeah. But yeah. then, you know, when I came to that realization that that's not me. Now I had used my husband. What 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 built the stage was I had used my husband and our kids as a distraction from taking care of me, yeah. from dealing. Or growing, not just dealing with myself, but growing, not wanting to grow. And I place my identity, my value, and my worth in their hands, right. along yeah. with using them as a distraction. Yeah. And he could have, you know, not saying he was completely perfect, obviously, in those bad years, but even the times that he was um, doing and at his best, it wasn't enough because 
I, I did not feel enough. You can't ever feel enough from somebody if you're not, if you're not feeling yourself. Right. And I learned that the long, hard way. You know, you see those little posts all the time on Facebook, but, yeah. <laughs> you know. What does it mean? What does it really mean? I, yeah. Until you're sitting there Googling your marriage for like the 150th time in the past four years, you're like, oh, wow. But the journey of self-care, along with that realization, it just, it showed me the impact of self-care along with it revealing self-accountability, how huge of an impact that that alone impacted my marriage. Um, before really starting the self-care journey, Laura, I seen a huge difference, obviously, in our marriage. Um, I had already moved back into our bedroom. Um, we, he surprised me with a date. Um, we used to go on one date, not a month. And that had quit for years. It just came to a stop. And I had gotten off work and I work on the COVID ward. And so I'm beat down, um, oh, yeah. tired. And I haven't been going anywhere. I went out to eat one time last year. Um, now that I'm not off the COVID ward, but I go straight home. And I came home and he had made dinner like completely turned our dining room into a whole like romantic and my husband is not romantic and one thing I love about him I'm not big on gushy stuff either <laughs> and so but he had I mean candles he had to go buy candles I didn't even have candles <laughs> and um because he was like a date night and wow. I was like whoa okay and it, and that was before the summer of last year of diving into the self-care, my self-care journey and learning myself. So you're, and, saying, you're saying that just you deciding to focus on your self-care actually brought out, kind of inspired him to make this romantic gesture. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Like it's not that, you know, and I brought that kind of same question up to him, but, you know, he just said, it wasn't that he finally seen me worthy of a surprise date night, which he had never in all the 13, 14 years and all we've been together. He's never done anything romantic like that. One and only time. Um, but just that it was like, man, she needs this. Oh. He finally felt that again. Like was able to thank to himself. He didn't, he didn't see my wall up anymore. He's seen me actually trying to better myself for myself first and then him. You know, at first it was kind of scary for him because some days I'd be, you know, some days it'd be triggers all day, especially when I was learning my triggers and learning how to handle them. Um, sure. it, it was kind of nerve wracking for him, honestly. Like he's like, oh, why is she so quiet all day? Why is she like this? He usually... I'm a little bit of a sass, and if I'm quiet, it's because the storm's coming behind me. <laughs> um, and I learned that about myself <laughs> after using your skills. <laughs> um, and so when you so, were when you went quiet, he thought, "Okay, that this means there's trouble oh yeah. brewing." And yeah, not- that was yeah. One time he told me that he had the thought. Well, that was a good run. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when I, because you were so quiet. And, yeah, he was like, here it goes. And and of course, I fell back because I'm like, you know, this whole, during that whole time of me pointing fingers at him and overanalyzing him and, oh, well, he, it, this is because of him. I realized that I had created triggers for him. <laughs> um, and still to this day, sometimes if, I, if I'm quiet too long, just thinking in my head um, about anything grocery list, he will come up to me and he will check in. And he's like, hey, just get it out. You know, sometimes it's that blunt. And I'm like, oh, no, it's the grocery list. Or, oh, no, 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 it's about this and that. I have to verbally tell him what it is. Because if not, it still gets to him when I'm quiet, you know. Or um, when See, I start moving furniture around. That's yeah. another one for <laughs> Right? That's <laughs> on. Yeah. It's not going well here. Furniture's moving. Yeah. So yeah. you're saying that, because so it sounds like as part of the skills, you were 
maybe duct taping more, just staying quiet. Like if you couldn't yes. say something. Yes. Um, that's the point I wanted to get to. Focusing on me and my self-care taught me, and it, it taught me the skills better, but I truly understood the skills once I could implement the skills toward myself. When I could be vulnerable with myself, gratitude toward myself. And it sounds so cliche. And if there's any women out there, they're like, um, yeah, you don't know how deep down my marriage is or, you know, he really is doing that. I'm not invalidating your experience because I still experience things with my husband that were wrong, even on his side. But it's like you said, Laura, you can't control what you can't control. And if you want any kind of positive outcome in this, it's going to start with yourself and yourself alone. I try to say in a more kind way, but I'm a very logical blunt person. And, um, and that's just kind of had the mentality I've had to have. It's not that I was thinking this isn't going to work or well, what if it doesn't work? I really when I had the realization of the damage I had done, not what he had done, not his mistakes that were his mistakes um, or his responsibility, what I had done alone. That's when I, I mean, I still cared to still have this marriage, but then I cared more about my happiness and my peace. What kinds of things, Kelly, did you look back and think, Oh no, that's, there's something there's here are some of the things I did that I regret. Oh, man. Okay. So my most embarrassing one, and I oh my goodness, and I say this so other women can understand. One of them, I'll get to, one of them was years ago, I it was Christmas, and my husband is a type of gift giver that he loves giving to something you need. Um, he likes, because he's a man, he likes the feeling need. Um, I ignored that or didn't know that back then either. But um, so for Christmas, um, I had, he had asked me what I wanted, wanted, he word. And so I told him, I don't remember what it was. But instead on Christmas morning, I opened up a huge, huge box of dishes. <laughs> now we had only been married. Well, no, we had, my son was born. So we had been married for about four and a half years. And so it was still not that long. So our dishes were still brand new. And I didn't know where this was coming from. Knowing the type of gift giver he was. <laughs> and I blew up. I'm like, on Christmas, where I sit in there, I'm like, what is this? And he's like, dishes. You know, the other day, I said, he said, I was commenting how the dishes now don't match, you know, everything else in the kitchen. And you agreed. And I was like, okay, so this is for you. And he was like, no, we had a whole conversation about it. Which we did. We did. And I did say, one day, I would love to replace all the dishes. And all the soup. <laughs> and so that's what it got me, you know, because it was in pretty, it was a conversation we had had that month. And oh, I lost it. I let him know about himself. Like, okay, this is self. I called him selfish. Um, and even though we had one more good year after that, that was the last year up until this year or last year that my husband bought me a Christmas present, an anniversary present, a birthday present, anything. And before that, if it was a holiday, I had a gift. <laughs> um, so but that was it. <laughs> there were, there were no gifts for about a decade there. You're saying, Oh yes, <laughs> there nothing. And I would grab about, I would grab him about it. I'd be like, I mean, really like, and I'm a gift giver. It's one of my love languages. And so I would go, all out birthday, Father's Day, Christmas. Um, I didn't even get Mother's Day anything from the kids from him, like nothing. And it, I would cry every Mother's Day, every Mother's Day, because I'm like, man, you can't give me a card from the kids. Yeah. Like, yeah. no, like the kids Painful. made me stuff, 
But, yeah. you know, it was like, this, hello, this is your job, quote unquote, <laughs> you know. Right, right. Um, so, but, but now, and now he's yeah. buying gifts again. He's buying gifts again. Um, I used to get so frustrated because I would over talk him. <laughs> and now, like, we, he will send me videos or like funny texts. Um, you know, because mushy stuff or, you know, I have this one trigger I don't want to go into detail about, but anyway, certain, you know, he's very respectful of it. And so one of the text messages I, he randomly sends me now every day is he sends me funny stuff. If you would have told me that a couple of years ago, I'd have been like, I don't even think he has my number saved. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but so yeah. he's trying to make you laugh every day. It sounds like. Every day. Um, and another embarrassing thing I did, this is technically number one, but some women can relate to this. I, me and him, we're both sarcastic. We have, that's one of the three things we have in common. And thank goodness we do, because we both have a dry sense of humor. Um, but he, we were visiting France, his best friend, long time best friend, and his Best friend, he had made a joke about, um, it was something to do with work. Um, at that time, we still owned our cattle ranch before COVID hit. And it was something about how much he worked. And in return, I made a snotty comment about, well, yeah, he'll work and, you know, do that. But don't ask for nothing at home. You know, I don't even think he knows where the kids' toothbrushes are. You know, like, somewhat around that. And just kept com- I kept coming in with the funny material. Yeah. I didn't even notice that nobody else was laughing. I mean, I was cracking up, you know, looking at him like, why are you, like, what? You know, you come at me all the time. I was so disrespectful that I didn't even notice one. I was doing that out of hiding how I really felt about him Mm -hmm. and my thought but two whether I did or didn't that was his best friend and his best friend only gets to come home once a year they live out of state um and have a a ranch that was still is two times bigger than what ours was I mean it was mass or it's massive and I took up the space and butted in I wasn't even asked to comment it I butted in um, walked across the room just to demoralize my husband. And there are still some days that I will apologize just out of the blue. Have to, I'll bring it up and apologize to him. And he, he'll tell me, stop. You're, you know, we're not those people now, but there's still sometimes where that it still creeps up to, I can't believe I was that person. <laughs> you know, oh, I love I, I love your accountability you know, for it, Kelly. I, I love can, it. it I it's super relatable. That. You're not the only one that has done this, right? We there's a yeah. whole community of us that um, maybe we don't like to admit it, but it's but in, in some no, ways we don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but in some ways, it's uh, you know kind of binds us together in a in a yeah, way. and, and yeah. Uh, it's just I really just hear you. It's not who you wanted to be. You want to, you want to be a respectful no. yeah. wife, not yeah. cutting your husband down. I wanted to feel respectful. You know, yeah. once I learned your skills, I wanted to feel respectful. You know, I didn't just want it to be because I was using these skills. He felt respected. I wanted yeah. him to see me as a respectful yes. person. I wanted to see myself as that. I wanted to see myself in all of these skills. Yeah. No matter what, um, and that's what I got. Yeah. <laughs> Hard work, but that's what I got. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It takes some focus. It, right, and achieve. I wouldn't really say hard work. It was not hard at all. There was just moments of uncomfortability. That's it. That's it wasn't right. hard. That's the sad part. You think it's hard, but then when you get to almost the middle of your journey, it's like it's just uncomfortable sometimes. <laughs> That's it. It's not hard. It's actually not at all. It could be. Uh, it could be a little scary. I think right at the beginning. Scary, yes. I, yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. You are definitely like um, 
I'm hoping that Jesus is in the boat or at least on the water with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and so what, what's your marriage like now? So he was saying, we'll go our separate ways when the kids are. Gone. Yeah. Oh but yeah. He had it. Um, he, he, you know, we're both diggers. He even petty one day um, wrote the date, you know, estimated when our um, youngest would graduate and like oh. wrote it. You know, like this like, could be the date we split up. Yeah. Like, like oh. I'm a real petty person. So I, I created that too. And I would do digs like that 24 yeah. seven, you know? Yeah. I don't know what I thought I was achieving, but I, I would do that. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. it's just a human. It's just part of being. Yeah. Human, right? Yeah. That's get you mean. before you get me. I think. Right. That's yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. But, yeah. But, so, so how about now? I mean, are we, are you still splitting up on that date? Um, no, no, no. Actually, he, I had wrote it on the fridge um, because I'm OCD. So he, that's another reason why I did. He wrote on the fridge with Expo marker. And of course, I didn't erase it. I left it for him to look at all the time. But um, our anniversary last year, um, we had realized it was still there. And we had just had the most rawest moment, which is actually when I realized, oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> like my moment of, oh my gosh, this it happened. It worked. <laughs> um, so he had wrote it on the fridge with Expo marker and now we can't get it off. <laughs> oh, we have, nice. we have bleached it. We have done everything. We, um, Pinterest it and like you could still faintly see it. And so now like that's where the kids school picture magnets go. <laughs> it just stays yeah, over it. <laughs> Um, oh. you know, he was like, I'm going to come home and you're going to buy a new fridge just to cover, just to get <laughs> rid of this. And I'm like, yeah. no, actually it's funny, you know, because, you know, if I could remember a lot, like if those days were still really raw to me, it would still be hard. But now I'm just like, you know, it's just part of their story. It just is what it is. <laughs> you know, yeah. we circled a, you know, 2028, 20, seven, um, yeah year on our um, fridge it's okay <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah sorry right. yeah so but yeah it was oh sorry go ahead well no just I just want to hear like what like from on your day-to-day marriage what's it like um yeah it's just like we had in the beginning but more but more mature like it's just mature um you know Every single day I come home and I have a partner. I have my teammate back. Oh, so you're getting help around the house and with the kids. Oh, help. Yeah. Like, I hate to say it like this, but to be in layman terms, I have, I have the father to my kids back, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Makes sense. I, oh, the, you know, the drinking, I thought, oh, if I could just quit, you know, stop his drinking, that would solve everything. Now, I can't even tell you the last time he drank. But sadly, Laura, he didn't drink that much then. I just thought that was the problem. <laughs> okay. you know? Yeah. But yeah. I sure thought it was, you know. Um, I no longer have to fold laundry in anger, you know, um, <sighs> because usually he's in there with me folding laundry. I have to tell him if I'm needing that to be my alone time, um, <laughs> you know, like, because what you sometimes I do like I'm not a clingy person and even in the beginning my husband has never been clingy and now sometimes I have to tell him I I, I feel like you're 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 being too clingy <laughs> <laughs> I don't say it that way I say it in you know like a more nurturing way but my brain is like why is he here <laughs> yeah um especially but sometimes with, you know sometimes my you some, yeah you need some solid yeah right yeah okay. I got used to being alone and then I adapted and, you know, started enjoying that time for my time. And then boom, there he is, you know. <laughs> but um, you always ask your guests at the end of it, what was the moment? Yeah. And I, I've been wanting to ride into your show for a long time. But funny, like real funny. I was like, but I don't have a moment. <laughs> like, it's just working, <laughs> you know. But then on our anniversary last year, we went out on a date, like I said earlier, and I, I had to write down, as soon as we got in the truck, I wrote down what he said um, while he was paying. <laughs> but um, he made the most, the sweetest thing my husband has ever said to me. And this was 
like my actual moment of when I my first thought was, oh my gosh, this worked. Like, oh my gosh, I pulled it off. <laughs> like, you know. Um, wow. But anyways, we it was towards the end of us eating and he he just looked at me and he said, you know, if if he would have had to face the amount of work that I had done to save us, he probably would have questioned whether he wanted to do it, like whether it was worth it. And at first I was like, my husband's really dry. So like even a blunt talker, more blunt than me. And I was like, where is he going with this? <laughs> Bless his heart. But then he, you know, followed, he just said, you know, I just don't know. Like, thank God. And so I was like, okay, he's being sweet. <laughs> I paused myself before reacting. And I, I told him, I said, you know, as determined as you were, that night to um to live 10 plus bad years I was really I'm gonna tell myself on that if you were given just a slight bit of chance to have 10 maybe even more good years you would at least attempted it you would have at least attempted it Mm -hmm. because honey that's all I did was I just attempted it. That was it. And I don't tell him, I haven't told him everything about the program and the skills and all that. He just knows like the gist of it, that it's um, more about me and um, helping me pretty much. <laughs> um, because my husband's a logical thinker and, you know, some men can also overthink <laughs> and he can sometimes. So but, this is a big acknowledgement of you, yes. what your accomplishment like yes. some people can run really fast or they're good actresses or whatever. Right. But you're, yeah, this was a big accomplishment. You fixed your family. Yeah. You know, and my husband never, even in the beginning, he's not one, um, you know, because of his child, his home life, which I never gave him grace for. That was another thing self-care taught me is I'm, telling him he needs to give me grace and appreciation, but I never gave it to my husband. Never. I will be very honest about that. I expected it, but I never gave it. And I never gave him, gave him grace for his home life and how that played in on him. And, you know, I'd always, like I said, be mad about the communication, be mad about everything and blaming, but never gave him grace. And so for my husband, just for those couple of words of, I can't believe he did it, you know, or, you know, basically like, wow. Um, it was more than just appreciation. Those were probably the most romantic words my husband ever told me yeah. because he, you know, was he, after I said that, he told me, he was like, I don't care if it was you, me, I don't care. And he was like, just thank God. He said, because, and he told me, and for any woman out there that's doubting your marriage, like, oh, he said it's done. Mine did too. He actually helped me move stuff into my bedroom, um, into separate rooms. And by, I mean, helped. I mean, he pretty much did it all um, before I got off work. I mean, he wanted to make me real comfortable away from him. Um, but he told me just to have him look at me and say, you know, I'm glad you did because he had even told himself, he had never told me until our last anniversary of last year that he's like, I couldn't think about going anywhere. He's like, I knew that day was going to come, but I would just tell myself it's just going to come and I'll deal with it then because he couldn't process us not being Mm -hmm. together. And he said, but if that, when that part came, he said, we wouldn't even be in each other's life Mm -hmm. and he couldn't process it. And my husband has never been that raw. Um, uh, he's honest. I've always had honesty for him, but that kind of rawness that a woman's like, oh, what's my man said? That's me. You know, <sighs> that's not my husband. I know, you know, he definitely affirms me now um, because I give him that affirmation also. But um, there's a lot of emotional th- safety at your house that didn't used to be. Yes. There. Oh, yeah. And I, that was one thing that I have been praying on because I thought it was there again, but I was like, oh, maybe not, you know, 
I'm just going to see what comes. <laughs> um, but yeah, after he said that, my first thought, Laura, was like kind of been home alone. Oh my gosh, this worked. <laughs> you know, like I pulled it off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. We still have our moments. I mean, we're real people. We still bump into each other. Um, but, you know, I no longer fear now when we bump into each other, what's next? There's not that thought of what's next anymore. It immediately, it's a whole different thinking process. And I didn't notice that until getting ready for to meet you was, I no longer have that thought anymore of well, what's next. <laughs> oh, great. Yep, another day. I don't. I don't prepare for the worst anymore. I just tell myself it's going to be good or I don't want it. And I'm going to give myself good. Mm. Plain and simple. And it's because of these skills, you know, all because of these skills. Soaking them up for myself. It's scary to thought because when you start doing it, you start thinking, well, oh, okay, that's great. They'll work for me. I can feel it changing me, but I can still come out the at the end of this and not have him but just keep going because eventually that thought is gonna just seem so crazy to you like why did I even think that because you're you're that's not going to be a care of yours it's not and that's just the most peaceful way I can put it it's not going to be a thought anymore um because of the skills is, and the podcast, you know, and if you can afford the coaching, please do the coaching, <laughs> you know, yeah. so you don't have to like get up at 10 o'clock at night and scroll through the podcast, which is great, but scroll through a topic, you know, a title of, oh, okay, this is what I'm feeling or thinking right now. <laughs> yeah. Let me click on this and go through this again, you know. So along those lines, what is your tip for a woman who's feeling like you did where, um, like she's just there, they're just there for the kids. Um, yeah. She's a single mom to those kids, yeah. right? And yeah. Uh, yeah, and everything that comes with it. <laughs> and everything that comes with it. And she and she, <laughs> she wants to be where you are now, where uh, she yeah. has like a team and her husband texts her, yeah. things to make her laugh every day. And he makes these romantic mm-hmm. gestures and he acknowledges her. What should she do? What's your advice for her? Um. Well, my advice is don't overload yourself with the, I call it the Laura Doyle process. <laughs> um, if you need to take each skill one by one, if you, need, if you need to slowly implement them all every day, however you need to start with the skills, just do it. Just do it. Um, but my advice is, once you can get to a place where you are comfortable, even if sometimes it's uncomfortable, where you can self-reflect, self-accountability, self-care, just the whole self-awareness, that's when your life will change. Until you get to that place, you can master these skills as far as physically and outerly. But when you master self-awareness and self-care, you will mindfully be a master of these skills. Until I honestly, in my opinion, you won't feel the fulfillment and the peace until you worry about you. And you can't control what you can't control. So just control you. Control everything about yourself. You can control your thoughts. You can control your emotions. You want your world to feel like you're in control, then you've got to do it. But it starts with the skills. It starts with the skills for sure. Did Use you ever think? You, did you ever think you'd yeah. be on the radio telling everybody how you uh, reject? You didn't receive the dishes graciously, <laughs> and you know, you're um, no. uh, saying <laughs> no. about how you ripped him up one all. side and down the other until he walked away and said, "We'll just divorce when the kids are um, left." Like, these are, no. this is accountability, right? This is what accountability looks no. like. Right? And Can actually just... it's um, me and my husband have um, this week to, to make me feel comfortable, um, you know, being on a live podcast. <laughs> um, we've started making inside jokes about it. He's, you know, because yeah, I'm just two of 2020. 
if you would have told me I would have been sharing a positive testimony about my marriage, um, I would have asked you if you have seen a psychologist. <laughs> like, you crazy. No. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I must be really fooling you real good on that social media because um, <laughs> no. Good family yeah. pictures on there, right? Where it looks all lovey-dovey. <laughs> well, it had gotten so bad. My husband refused to take family pictures. I went through three years of like having to merge pictures, like even birthday pictures, like posting pictures of the kids' party with me and him in it together. <laughs> Um, and here we are. I'm on Laura Doyle podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Take how good our marriage we is. We're doing our yeah. happy dance. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And when I told, when I read the the email to my husband, I'm like, oh my gosh. He was like, hun, make sure it's not a scam. Like he was so worried that someone was scamming me. Like I was getting catfished. And he even, he even got the email and like tracked it for me just to make sure. He was like, well, babe, we're awesome. I mean, we are awesome people, but oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, I know. He was like, um, and I told him briefly what I wrote in and he was like, I mean, I knew we were bad, but that's, you gotta be pretty bad for someone to need you as an example, like jokingly saying it. And I'm like, I know we're just that good. You know, we were just that bad that we were, we're so bad. Good. We're good. Good. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think there, I love that perspective because I do think that, um, there's a, the breakdown, uh, can lead to the breakthrough and without that breakdown, yeah. You know, without that big fight where he went back in the house and wrote the date on the refrigerator, maybe we wouldn't be <laughs> today, right? So. Yeah, I, actually, um, you know, Laura, it was that night when I woke up that Saturday morning, um, when I, the morning that I started listening to your podcast, it was that afternoon when I seen it on the side of the fridge. So it was like immediately after that, he had, before I could dig at him that next day, he went ahead and... It was that, that's when it was. I'm going to tell them that when I get home. Because we were like, when did I even watch that? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Now I remember. <laughs> Which was what funny. If, if you could go back in time and tell yourself what something that you know now that you didn't know then, what would it be? Um, That you can do, you really can do anything you put your mind to. Mm. And as long as you're okay, you're going to be okay. You know, um, I'm blessed that my marriage survived, but I actually say this with happiness that e I wish I could have told myself that I was going to get to a place that even if it didn't, I was going to be at peace at, with him and with myself. Like I no longer had resentment. So I was even at peace with him and with myself. And I was looking forward to finally being at peace and feeling happiness and not constantly feel like even when we were good feeling like you know even before the bad times were because of my ptsd from being um trigger warning sexually and physically assaulted i constantly emotionally and mentally was constantly on a hamster wheel constantly and that's the only way i can explain it i was always on fight or flight didn't know it um i just thought oh i'm just hyper that's right which i am just, just but, how it was yeah. yeah, I literally felt hyper even inside. So if you would have even told me when me and him started dating, that one day I was going to feel at peace, I would have told my future self, I sure hope so. I hope I don't bury anything off and I make it there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because this is amazing. And I mean, even today, I'm so at peace. He, you know... It's working, but say one day, you know, something crazy happened. We're both at peace now. We're both mature. We're both on the road to growth. And the road to growth, it never ends, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. Maybe one day we're on the front porch and rocking chairs. I guess that's when the growth ends. But um, I enjoy growing. I'm enjoying this road. I'm enjoying it very much so. Beautiful, Kelly. What about your kids? How has this impacted them? Oh, my goodness. Um, literally, I think it was like the month before um, our, before finding you, I was considering putting my oldest in therapy 
um, which some of them are because I mean, we on we've never fought in front of the kids, um, which we thought, oh, pat our stuff on the back, you know, we're good parents. They don't know anything because we're not fighting in front of them. But um, to the mom out there, they know, and I hate to say that because that's the most devastating. That was the most devastation to realize out of everything. Honestly, I felt more devastating realizing that my kids was feeling the impact of my marriage. It was more devastating when I realized that than it was when I found out that, you know, he had had an affair. Mm -hmm. It it compared to nothing of realizing, oh my gosh, am I screwing them up too? (laughs) You know, because that's what a mom thinks. It's like, oh great, you know, we're messing their life up too. Um. But now, Laura, it's like, I see the tension. They see, they literally physically look relaxed. My kids feel comfortable telling either one of us that they don't even want to eat something. They were so tensed up from us being that way that they were, they didn't even want to tell us that they didn't like a certain food. They were so confused. And they were so emotionally just, I had wound them up, you know, obviously pouring into them, you know, uh, um, I wasn't pouring into them what I know now. I was pouring into them, honestly, that, that toxic thinking, you know, those, the toxic way of how to handle confrontation or feeling, you know, and so that did create damage. Um, we both, my husband and I both have taken accountability for that. And we have apologized to our kids for it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I thought that was when the real battle, uh, or not really battle, but real triumph and just struggle was really going to come in was now changing our parenting. Because that is hard to do. I have watched mm-hmm. so many people, you know, when it came to needing to change it up, take a long time. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I, you know, I knew and it was going to cause more effect for our baby. Um, but honestly, they took it like a champ. <laughs> they were like, thank God. <laughs> thank God, people. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the first couple months of us both being on board, but even with me changing myself, because I had to stop thinking, oh, well, they can't get better if he's not on board with this. I had to stop thinking that. I had to. Um, because it was doing me no good. And so I had to say, only I'm the mom, only I can change mom. Only I can be mom. And so mom changed mom. And what I allow and don't allow is what I allow and don't allow. And yeah, that can be confusing for kids. But when he seemed more positivity than negativity, they were kicking back to me. I don't know when he got on board, but thank God he did. Um, because then a lot of the negativity, like the kickback I was getting from them and the emotional baggage they were unloading on me, which of course was fun. What we're parents is what we ask for, um, what we chip into. But he, um, it really, really, I can't tell you when the last time it was we had a meltdown. I can't. Um, I hope knock on wood. <laughs> wow. it's just, they're so at peace. They're just, I think they're probably more peaceful than we are. And just the satisfaction of knowing that my kids are going to go into relationships, marriages, or just into the world in general with having these skills in their environment and then in their life and knowing them, it's it's worth more than anything ever. Mm. Being able to give this your skills and everything I've learned from you and the journey to them. I, I wouldn't trade for anything oh. as, as long as they have it, you know, and, and there was even a time I thought, you know, oh, well, what if we don't work out, you know, and then I, before our anniversary last year, and then I seen how happy our kids were and like, just how they're like their growth and their mindset. And I'm like, you know what? That's worth it. That right there is worth it. I don't care what comes out of this. They are better people. And I feel better. I'm at peace that that um, is the most satisfaction out of anything is how happy they are. Really great job. 
so inspiring. Yeah. That is really, that is very moving, beautiful. All right, you're a role model of um, uh, possible. I don't know if I don't know if I be a role model yet. <laughs> well, every um, parent is whether they want to be. I'm, or not, I'm a walking right? trigger morning. Yeah, yeah. someday I'm still a walking trigger morning. You know, my yeah, husband, yeah, sure. You not know, a perfect, not a perfect role model. Yeah. But, uh, but you, um, you remind but me. I'm of definitely that the average. Song. I'm average. <laughs> well, you remind me of that song of uh, it starts. Let there be peace on earth, and let oh, it begin yeah. with me, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, you've created yeah. Um, peace on earth. You're peaceful. Yeah. Your husband is peaceful. Your children are peaceful, and it's like everyone's greatest wish, really, to have that. Yes. So. Uh, you must feel very accomplished. You seem incredibly accomplished to me as yeah. a, a wife and a mom. Yes. Yeah. woman too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I was getting a little choked up. I had to catch myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 You know, when you think about it, journey, it's just like, I cannot believe I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I would not treat those bad years. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's those bad years that brought us here. It's before the journey, before the healing begins, we got to have that. And um, whew, cannot believe I'm sitting here grateful for those bad years and what it's, what it's brought us now. Yeah. 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 Yes, ma'am. I love that. Yeah. I was thinking yeah. that uh, those broken pieces of glass, right? That's your stainless glass. Yes. No, yes, no. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, super inspiring, Kelly. Thank you so much for Thank your you. authenticity and your vulnerability, your amazing accountability. It was really engaging to hear your most embarrassing stories that were so relatable uh, and human. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You did a great job. And uh, I'm okay, sure you, great. Inspired, you inspired a lot of other listeners today to uh, get started with the skills. So, I hope. I really hope so. Yeah, I really hope so. I hope I give some woman or man, but some woman a piece of hope for themselves, if anything, for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Great job. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. And now it's time for the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award. It's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice. Yeah, it's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week. And the advice that has me ranting wildly this week was sent to me by a student who says, This was from my marriage counselor last night. He means well, but oh no, hope this gives you a chuckle. It definitely gave me a chuckle right after I gasped and groaned and OMG'd so much that John was like, what, what? So I was like, wait till you hear this one. And then we, you know, gasped and groaned and OMG'd together, which is perversely enjoyable for me. Maybe more than I should admit. So I'm excited to get this and I'm grateful for your contribution to the podcast. Thanks so much for thinking of me and sending this along. This student writes, after going over the 16 cognitive distortions that people tend to have in their relationships, which leads to conflict, like overgeneralizations, jumping to conclusions, all or nothing thinking, et cetera, I asked my counselor, how we would go about changing these bad thinking habits at this point in our marriage and lives. And he said that my husband and I should both get a jar and put our names on it. Every time one partner said something that represented a cognitive distortion, the other person would point it out and that partner would have to put a quarter in the other partner's jar. And at the end of the week, the person with the most quarters 
would win. They would quote unquote win and they could go buy something. And she added, he said it would be fun. I almost died. So see why I was OMG so bad when I read this? I mean, what could be more fun than playing the blame game all week with your spouse for the chance to get a dollar twenty-five to spend on yourself? Especially if you're already struggling to have peace and connection. This is just gonna make everything go kablooey. I mean, I I can just imagine the warm, fuzzy response I would have to my husband, John, saying, Laura, you're exhibiting cognitive distortion number 13, which means you have to put a quarter in my jar. I'd be like, yeah, I'll show you some cognitive distortion. I mean, oh, I I can't. Okay. Talk about a hostile environment. You're purposely pointing out when you think the other person's brain is distorted and expecting that to somehow improve your marriage. I think cognitive distortion number 17 might be the idea that you can change someone else by pointing out their behavior and complaining about it, criticizing it. If you followed this advice, you'd not only be eroding the emotional safety in a hurry, which intimacy needs emotional safety to thrive, but you would also be creating a habit of focusing on what you don't want to experience instead of focusing on what you do want to experience, which I know from my experience is how you create marital hell. As Francis O. Walsh put it, you'd be finding fault like it was buried treasure. Nobody ever got happier that way. The only way I can see this advice being of any benefit to a marriage would be if the couple started making fun of the dopey counselor together. Because the advice to point it out every time your partner says something that represents one of 16 cognitive distortions and make them put a quarter in your jar is the very, very worst relationship advice I've heard all week. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll share how to ask for what you want in your marriage. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that I just read an article about a study that found that drinking wine can protect you from COVID. And I'm feeling very smug about that. 